All right, uh, this is gonna be a tech tip video, but it, as it applies to the 76 Marshall Super Lead, it'll also be in that playlist. But it's a real common issue with these older Marshalls that the old uh, voltage selector and impedance selector switches just wear out. They physically get weak, they're not reliable, it's unsafe. And the new ones that Marshall makes are way too large for this hole, and it's very expensive to get the green lead punch to do that larger. And there are a lot of bad solutions to this I have seen. Someone had done a terrible job on this before. But uh, in this case, I think I've got a clever solution. And I'll show that now with fingers crossed that it is actually clever and that it works because if it works, it's gonna be really elegant and easy. You know, so this next bit of the video, I'm filming outside because I'm gonna be doing some drilling stuff and maybe a little bit noisy, but bear with me. Here I have two steel fender washers one and a half inches wide with a three eighths inch hole in the middle. And I've made this drilling template, which should allow me to use these with that 76 Marshall to uh, make up for the old large holes for the voltage and impedance selector switches. But uh, if I were to try to do this by hand, not only would it be very difficult to get them precise, given that it's steel and there's not a lot to grab onto, this would be very dangerous. So let me show you how I'm gonna do this with the drill press. All right, some scrap lumber, thanks to Norm Abrams, and a smaller washer and screw, and all of a sudden, these won't move, and uh, I've got a large piece. Now, if this were hypercritical, I'd have them exactly on the same line, and I'd set up a, a fence and all that, but I, I can position the bit by eye, and I'm not gonna show you the whole process because it's boring, and it, you know, it's just a drill press. I'm gonna start with a very small bit, and then go up to an eighth, and then the final uh, 964 for a number six screw. And then I will use my uh, deburring bit, which is just a countersink bit, uh, take off any rough edges on front and back, uh, and then it'll be good to go. So let me go drill this away, and we'll see if it, my idea works. Okay, after the drill press, I've got two one and a half inch steel washers with 3 8 inch centers and they're drilled fairly precisely and smoothly. Let's see how it goes into the chassis. All right, I'm really pleased with that. If you get the measurements right, and I'll give those to you in a minute so you can do it yourself, it's pretty much self-centering. So here I've got an impedance selector switch mounted, much better than the crappy one that came in. And here I could do the same switch and wire it as a voltage selector, but this amp has been hardwired at 117. So I'm actually gonna do a post-phase inverter master volume, uh, which fits the same hole, and it's right by the, right in between the, the four output tubes, so it's great for the grids. So, very nice. And uh, uh, normally I would label this so that it actually lines up precisely, but I think, I have a suspicion this is the owner's handwriting, so let it be. And this is an old chicken head I had lying around. Um, I'll get a prettier one on that. If we do a chicken head, I mean, I could use the little one that matches the rest and I'll, I'll do that for the master volume when it goes on here. But, uh, I might do a chicken head for the master volume too, just so that we can feel it when you reach around the back of the amp. You can't tell where you are with one of these by, by feel. The chicken head you can. So I think two chicken heads. I'll ask the owner though. I do have the matching one for the front if necessary, but this will be good and uh, should be very reliable. Uh, this becomes an extension of the chassis at this point because it is thick gauge steel. Let me flip this over to make it easier to see. All right, so good gauge steel uh, uh, fender washers. That's not going anywhere. And it's held in place by steel, stainless steel number six screws with number six steel, uh, stainless steel nylock nuts. Uh, that may be the strongest part of the entire chassis at this point. So, uh, compare to the flimsy nonsense that was in the sample when it came in. This should be brilliant. Um, all right, so these are stainless steel washers. I got them at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, I think. Uh, they're one and a half inches in diameter. They're under fender washers. Actually, no, I got them at a different store. It's a Hillman part. Uh, 
anyway, they're easily available. One and a half inch diameter uh, stainless, it's not stain, ah, la, la, la. try that again. One and a half inch diameter steel fender washers with a three eighths inch uh, opening in the center. Um, and then I drilled 0.188 inch holes, 1.3 inches center to center. So I had to use the drill press because I didn't have any margin of, of error there. Um, if you are in a metric country, i.e. the rest of the entire world, I'll leave you to uh, uh, translate from one and a half inches, 1.3 inches, 3 eighths inches, and 0.188 inches to metric. But uh, this is a very good solution. It costs about $2 in parts. You do need to have a drill press. You do need to know how to operate a drill press safely. You know, as Norm says, with these safety glasses, blah, blah, blah. Um, so if you do this and you try to do it by hand or you don't know what you're doing and you put your eye out, uh, Ralphie's mom and I warned you. P.S. For those of you who are seeing this for the first time as part of that 76 Marshall project. Yeah, I've got some good stuff to share with you guys. Including that the really awful panel. Uh, the worst of the damage has been undone. Once this is in, in the uh, cabinet with the wood pressing here and here, this will be pretty darn good. You know, the rest of it was kind of beat up already. It was just this one area that was just bent and flanging out like crazy. So I'm pleased with this. Uh, the only way to get it better would be go to a machine shop with a hydraulic press. And uh, I'm not sure that even that would completely undo this crease. Once you crease aluminum like that, or whatever material this is, that's a, a structural weakness it wants to bend there. And so when you have these out of the amp, out of the cabinet, be careful. If you catch that on your, your shirt, it will rip up. And that's probably what happened in the past here. Uh, when in doubt, I put a strip of painter's tape on the corners of these and fenders and stuff so it won't flop and, and get torn. But anyway, back to the cool stuff that these plates will allow me to do.